tonight. That's exciting. Man. Surprised that Brother Mike ain't up here. I've, I've, I heard, I've heard you sing. I think you could hang in there with them. <laughs> All right. Well, I want to remind everyone, uh, tomorrow night we have a men's fellowship at 6 o'clock. Uh, Tuesday night we have visitation at 6 o'clock. Wednesday at noon we have a prayer meeting. And uh, <clears throat> Saturday we'll be having a work day here at the church. If you have any uh, lawn equipment, grass cutting stuff, uh, painting stuff, anything like that, you could bring that and get with uh, Brother Keith and Brother Christopher. If y'all have any questions, I think they're kind of ramrodding certain things, bigger projects on that day. Uh, if you have any questions, also April 8th and 9th is the Youth Rally for New Manna. If you plan to come, there's a sign-up sheet in the foyer. Also, for any teenagers that want to get a T-shirt, a New Manna T-shirt for the theme this year, you need to get with Brother Austin and let him know your shirt size so he can make sure that he has that order. Did y'all hear me back there? Good deal. All right. And don't forget about Friday night. Their all-night prayer meeting. Their sign-up sheets are, are in the back. We passed them around this morning. I had a few people tell me, just put me on there anywhere. The problem with that is I don't remember who all told me that. So please put your name on that list somewhere. And if you don't care what time, just put any time. And I'll be in touch with you to kind of spread it out if we can to make sure we got people here every hour. Okay? It's going to be a blessing. I'm excited about seeing <clears throat> what God is going to do uh, after this prayer meeting is over and he sees uh, our hearts in this matter of our church. It's a, it's a good work, and we should, we should put some time in, like Brother Jesse's been preaching on. All right. Brother Keith, would you pray for the offering this evening?
And I feel disheartened, forsaken, forgotten. Jesus is precious to me. In every condition, oh, he's the great physician. Jesus is precious to me. Jesus is precious. He is so precious. Jesus is precious to me. is precious to me. He's comfort in sorrow. He's the only hope for tomorrow. Jesus is precious to me. Jesus is precious to me. Jesus is precious. He is so precious. Jesus is precious to me. Jesus is precious to me. Jesus is precious. He is so precious. Jesus is precious to me. Jesus is precious to me. Amen. Miss Beth, Miss Brenda, can y'all come sing? Yeah? Can y'all come sing a couple of them ones y'all sang the other night? Putting you on the spot, Miss B. You can do it. If there's anybody in this building that can do it, you can do it. Amen. Y'all just sing a few. I'm not asking you to sing all four, just a couple of them. Y'all don't have to do that one if, it, if it's going to wear you out. I don't know. Y'all pick, pick a couple. We went to sing that we the other night. We... Uh, <laughs> Brother Clark Herring, they, he called me last uh, last week, and they was having, uh, this past week, and they was having a revival camp meeting, and uh, one of the choirs that he was, that he had coming uh, wasn't able to make it. They had to cancel, and uh, so he called me and asked if we, if we had uh, some folks that could come sing, and uh, these ladies uh, stepped up and went, we went down there and they sang and did a phenomenal job. And, uh, so, uh, they did a real good job and we're, we're grateful for that. Uh, so y'all just enjoy, uh, enjoy this singing tonight and, uh, worship the Lord. Amen. I feel like we just need to worship him. Amen. Just need to worship the Lord. And, uh, Miss Joanne, was that Brother Ricky? His son just passed about 40 minutes ago. So y'all pray for that family. Brother Mac's nephew uh, just passed away. So y'all pray for 
Pray for that family, okay? <clears throat> if you would. Uh, his name is Brandon. What's the boy's name? So y'all pray for that family. Pray for Brother Mac and them uh, as they're going to be dealing with this loss. Amen. But uh, let's, let's worship the Lord tonight. Enjoy the... How many of y'all glad to be in church? Amen. 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 And uh, thankful to be here. Thankful for what God's doing. Amen. Thankful for what the Lord did this morning. Amen. Saved three souls. Amen. Amen. And uh, there they are. I was wondering about y'all. Brother Aiden, right there in his hood, got saved this morning. Amen. Amen. And one of his buddies, was that a cousin or just a friend? Friend from school. Got saved right along with him. Amen. Brother Chris forgot to lead them to the Lord this morning. Upstairs and then downstairs, Miss Mary. Miss Debbie got to lead her to the Lord. We've been praying for her for a lot of a lot of years. Amen. And she was just over the moon, thrilled this morning. And we we were too. We're thankful to see her get saved. Amen. And uh, I'm th- I'm just thankful for what God's doing around here. Amen. Amen. And I would encourage you to get in on it. Amen. Y'all ready? I'm trying to give y'all some time. All right. Amen. When I look, I look around and see the, good things, the things he's done for me. I know. I know. I'm unworthy of them all. But his blessing. So much to thank him for, and I've got so much to thank him for, so much, so much to praise him for. You see, you see, he's been so good to me, and when I think, I think of what. Stop and say thank you, thank you for all you've done for me. And one day, one day I'll reach heaven shore. Oh, please let me kneel once more. I've got so much, so much to thank Him for, and I've got. So much to thank him for, so much, so much to praise him for. You see, you see, he's been so good to me. And when I think, I think of what he's done where, and where he's brought me from, I've got so much, so much to thank. to thank him for. Some are known by great authority for kingdoms as far as eyes can see. In royal robes they rule from thrones, waging war they overthrow the weak. 
call it a victory, but my King is known by mercy. My King is known by grace for the hope in His name and a power that saves. My King is known by the cross. My King is known by an empty there a minute. I'm going to have them sing that again. I like that one. It's my favorite one. Amen. You know in Genesis the Bible says that in the beginning God created. He created everything. He breathed life into man. He created this earth. He created the heavens. He created the waters. He created the stars all the animals and we know God by that amen as a creator the creator of all things we know him as you read on through your Bible if you, if you go a few chapters past that you'll see him as the God of the flood a God of judgment amen a God the Bible says that uh, it because of the earth and the condition that it was in and the violence and the, the sin that it displeased God that it was that, it, that he, it regretted him that he even made man 
But then he found, but there was one man that found grace. Because he was a righteous man. Amen. And so we see that God of judgment, but in the middle of judgment, we see grace. And then as you go on a few more chapters, you, you, you read about another man named Lot who was in Sodom and Gomorrah. And we see their judgment and wrath again. But in the middle of that judgment and wrath, we see grace. Lot yeah. found grace. Not because, not because Lot was perfect, but because he was God's. Yeah. Amen? Because that was his, he, he was God's son. Amen? He was part of the kingdom. He was part of the Lord's, listen, he was part of, he was part of, uh, of God's remnant. And so he found grace. In the midst of turmoil. In the midst of wrath, in the midst of judgment, in the midst of uh, God destroying an entire city, an entire nation, Lot found grace. And he got out of there. Amen. Then we see a few chapters later, we see a young man that on all accounts should have been killed. Pharaoh had issued a decree to kill all the first all the males in, in Egypt. But God saw fit to raise one man, one boy. That's what Brother Tony preached on last week. We were there. And listen, it, I mean, he broke it down to where I never thought about it like that before. No, Moses, Moses' mama put him in that river. In a little basket, listen, in a, in a river filled with crocodiles that had been feeding on babies yeah. every day. And the fact that, listen, the Bible says that she had done all she could to keep that baby boy quiet. And she put, pushed him out and said, "This, I don't know what else to do. And you know what? Moses found grace. Now, didn't find it where she thought she would have found it. Because as, as Pharaoh's daughter is standing there at the riverbank, here comes a little basket floating up. And a young girl who had been raised and trained that, the na- that nation of Israel, those Hebrews were good for nothing but death and she she could have she could have just stepped on that basket and held it underwater and said that's another Hebrew boy but God God said no and that baby started crying the Bible said that she had compassion and then the Bible says that she sent for the baby's mother to nurse it and then gave it wages yeah. it pays to serve God yeah. and then over there the same situation in the book of Ruth if you'll look in the book of Ruth Naomi was bitter at God Naomi got to a place where she was bitter and mad at God and mad at uh, how things had turned out in her life And some of it probably wasn't even her fault, let's be honest. But she was upset and bitter. Said that God hath dealt bitterly with me. But she had a young daughter-in-law that was faithful. Who found grace in a field while she was out there gleaning. Those little handfuls on purpose. And the Bible says that Ruth had a child. And when Ruth had a child, the Bible says that all them ladies was sitting there and Naomi was holding that baby. And they said, look look how good God's been to you, Naomi. Naomi hadn't done nothing. She was bitter. 
but she got the blessing. The Lord, they kept saying, the Lord's blessed you. The Lord's blessed you. How many of y'all sitting in here tonight and you feel the same way? See, that's the God that I know. Let me, in Matthew chapter number 27, Dylan, if you will just keep playing, I'm going to be quick. See, we know God by these different ways. If you read your Bible, if you go on, you hit the New Testament, you'll see that God kept His word when He said there would be a child born of a virgin. God was faithful in keeping his word. Moses delivered Israel out of bondage. God, in Matthew uh, chapter number one, you see where God created a way of escape for us. This is when the age of grace came. Listen, when Jesus Christ was born into this earth, when Jesus Christ was born onto this planet, Listen, that was our opportunity right then and there to be to, to have grace brought to us. To every man. To everyone that believed. Pharaoh was known by being a wicked king. There's a lot of wicked kings in the Bible. There's a lot of wicked rulers that we, listen, that we know of today. Hitler. The ones running the show now. Vladimir. Joe. Wicked. They're not known, listen to me. They're not known by grace. They're not known by mercy. They're not known by love. They're not known by a godly heritage. They're not known by a good testimony. They're not known by being a godly leader, being a godly uh, uh, role model. Listen, they're not known by that. But I know one king who's known solely by love and grace and mercy. Amen. Amen. The Bible says in Matthew 27, verse number 24, when Pilate saw that he could, could, he could prevail nothing, that rather a tumult was made, that he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See ye to it. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and on our children. God help us. Then he he released he Barabbas unto them. And when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus in the common hall and gathered unto him the whole, listen to me, the whole band of soldiers. I'm going to describe to you your God. What he's known for. Verse 28. And they stripped him. And put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had plated a crown of thorns. They put it on his head. And a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him. And mocked him saying, Hail, King of the Jews. Listen. And they spit upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head. And after they had mocked him, they took the robe off of him and put his own raiment on him and led him away to crucify him. And as they came, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. Him they compelled to bear his cross. And when they were come into a place called Golgotha, that is to say a place of a skull. They gave him vinegar to drink, mingled with gall. When they, when he tasted thereof, he would not drink. And they crucified him. 
and parted his garments, casting lots that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. And sitting down, they watched him there. Listen to me. It says, sitting down, they watched him there. And set up over his head the accusation written, This is Jesus, King of the Jews. On down in verse 41, Likewise also the chief priests mocking him and with the scribes and elders. He saved others. Himself he cannot save. If he be the King of Israel, let him now come down from the cross and we believe him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now if he will have him. For he said, I am the son of God. Listen, they mocked and they made fun. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which is to say, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Some of them that stood there when they heard that said, This man called for Elias. And straightway one of them ran, took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink. The rest said, Let, let be, let us see whether Elias will come to save him. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from top to bottom. And the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose. Verse 54, now when the centurion... And they that were with him watching Jesus saw the earthquake and those things that were done. They feared greatly, saying, Truly, this was the Son of God. The very moment that that veil was rent in twain was the very moment that you and I had access to salvation. No more sacrifices to be made. No more uh, no more having to go to the temple and sacrifice a, a bull or a goat or, or, or a lamb. No more living in fear that the law, uh, that we were handling the law properly. At that very moment, listen to me, the blood of Christ was placed on the mercy seat as forgiveness and payment for our sin. And listen, we, we never, listen, at that very moment, it became a free pardon. It became a free gift. It became something that we didn't have to work for anymore. It became something that was, listen, by grace through faith. And listen, all we had to do at that point, at that very moment, is believe on the Son of God. Listen, believe on the one that gave his life for us. Listen, that's all that had to be done. That's the king I know. I don't know many kings. I know one I know the king I know the one that when he comes back it's going to be written on his thigh amen when he opens his mouth the sword's going to come out amen the word of God that's the king I know A lot of people fear kings, fear the wealthy, fear the rich, fear the powerful. I remember when I was in college, I was going to work for a very wealthy doctor. And I remember I had an interview and I was nervous because this doctor was very, very wealthy, very prominent. In, in upstate South Carolina and I had an interview in a panel with all these doctors don't ask me how I got there but I remember the day before I went in for this interview I, I was talking to my preacher and I said 
I'm, I'm nervous. All these, all these do- millionaires. Millionaires. And I'm going to be in there asking for a job. And he said, yeah, but they don't know the one that you know. You're the son of a king. He said, you're the son of a king. You have the king's blood flowing through your veins. Amen. You're the heir to the throne. Listen, you're you're part of the lineage. You're, You're the bride of Christ. They don't know nothing about that. And listen, I remember going in there thinking, yeah, I'm the son of a king. And when they said, tell me a little bit about yourself, I said, boy, I'm the son of a king. They didn't know what I was talking about. They thought I was crazy. And I told them my testimony sitting at that table, squalling. And I told them, I said, I know y'all got money, and I don't have none, but my father owns the cattle on a thousand hills, and he's the king of kings. And my Bible tells me he's the Lord of lords. That's the king that I know. Amen. I was looking at my Bible a minute ago. And I wrote this a long time ago. In front of my Bible, he's the king of Jews. He's the king of Israel. He's the king of righteousness. He's the king of the ages. He's the king of heaven. He's the king of glory. And he's the king of kings. And then I wrote, that's my king. Amen. I want to ask you something. I want you to listen to me. Everybody in here, please listen. One of the most critical moments on that on, for those men that were at Calvary, Brother Brian, is the Bible said that they sat there and watched him. They sat there and they watched him. Let me ask you this tonight. How long are you going to sit here and watch him? How long are you just going to sit by and watch? How long stand you here gazing? How long are you going to sit by and just watch the king? And listen, he's dying for you. He was dying for them. He was shedding their blood for them. The Bible says that he he prayed, Lord, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And you, let me tell you something this, this, this evening. We're going to have, Brother Benny, we're going to have a slew of people fall off of a church pew straight into hell. Listen, watching him. Watching him. Watching all this go on, watching all this go by, watching us come to church and watching people get saved and surrender their life to Christ and, and, and sell out and, and, and get right with God. And listen, watching people get saved and get baptized, but they're going to sit there and watch and fall off into hell. I'm talking about, listen to me, as the blood was dripping off the cross onto the ground at their feet. They were close enough that if the wind blew, the blood would have hit them in the face. They, some of them literally had the blood of Jesus on their hands, splattered on their clothes. Some, Listen to me. Some of them had their spit running down his face. Some of them had the beard from his face still stuck to their hand. And they just watched. You say, yeah, but I would have never done such a thing. Well, if you reject him, you're doing the same thing. How could we sit in a church service after church service after church service 
and the Spirit of God move and the power of God move and you sit there lost, unsaved, on your way to hell and you know it and God knows it and you're just going to play the game. You're just going to watch as the Son of God cries out on your behalf. But there's going to come a day Listen, there's going to come a day when that grace is over. There's going to come a time. And I believe, Brother Mike, it's going to be in our lifetime. It's not going to be, it's not going to be when my son is a grandpa. No, it's going to be in this lifetime, I believe, with all my heart. You understand that there is nothing left in prophecy to be fulfilled for God to return the trumpet of God could sound at any moment and we're just going to sit here and watch and wait for the time to run out they just watched Let me ask you this. How long are you going to watch? How long are you going to watch until you get in? Until you run to that blood that can wash away all your sins and change your life. Take away the guilt. Take away the pain. Take away all the, all the hurt. Mostly take away all your sin. How long? How long? Let's all stand. They're going to sing. I'm going to have them sing this song. And let me ask you this question. How do you know the king? Do you know him as one of the soldiers that just stood by and watched? Or do you know him like that one thief on the cross who said, have mercy on me? Everybody else doubts him. Everybody else doubts that he's real. Everybody else doubts that this whole thing's real. Oh, it's just something we do. We just go to church because it's the right thing to do. No, listen, we go to church because we're saved. Because we're born again. Because we've had Jesus Christ's blood applied to our life. Because he changed us. The old things are gone. The old man is gone. All things are new. Heads bowed and eyes closed. I'm going to ask you this question How long? How long are you going to watch your spouse live in salvation and you just miss out on it? How long are you going to watch your children enjoy salvation and you just miss out? How long are you going to watch your mom and dad, teenager? Listen. How long are you going to watch your mom and dad pray for you and beg God for you and just watch as the king die for your sins and stand by and let the grace of God, the clock, run out because the clock is ticking. Let me ask you this question. They're going to sing, and I want to ask you to come. How many of you tonight would say, and listen, I know beyond the shadow of a doubt, there's some lost people in this room. You say, Brother Jesse, it's a Sunday night. I know. There's lost people standing in this room tonight, and you need to be saved. You're not promised tomorrow. You're not promised another chance. You're not promised another opportunity. This might be your last chance. This might be your last 
chance to be saved. Let me ask you this. Nobody's looking. I want you to be honest with me. I want you to be honest with me. Who in here tonight would say, Preacher, Brother Jesse, pray for me. I'm lost. I've never been saved. Would you please pray for me? Anybody like that? Just slip your hand up. Put it down. Say, Preacher, pray for me. I'm not 100% sure that I'm saved. Just slip your hand up. Put it right back down. Say, Preacher, pray for me. I'm not going to embarrass you. I promise. I promise you. I'm just going to pray. I just want to know who you are so that I can pray. How about this? How many of you would say, Brother Jesse, I haven't been living with my eyes on the king like I should. I've had a kind of a messed up perception of the cross. I, I've had a messed up perception of the king. A lot of times I, I only just go to him when I need him. I run to him when I need him. But other than that, I don't have that relationship with him like I should. How many of you would say that's you? Hands all over the building. As they sing, won't you come? Won't you come? Folks are moving. Some are known by great authority for kingdoms as far as eyes can see. In a royal they rule from thrones waging war they overthrow the weak and call it a victory Come on. but my king is known by mercy my king is known by grace for the hope Everybody's looking, everybody on the altar. Maybe you've already come to the altar. And you, maybe you were one of the ones that are not sure about your salvation. Maybe you'd like to slip your hand up right there on the altar and say, that's me, I'm, I'm not 100% sure that I, if I was to die right now that I'd go to heaven. Maybe you're right there on the altar, you'd like to slip your hand up. I got folks that would like to come pray with you. Is there anybody... In your seat on the altar. Say, preacher, pray for me. I'm not saved. If you just slip your hand up right there on the altar, I'd have somebody come pray with you. Have somebody come work with you. They're going to sing. Go ahead. can almost see him even now rejected with thorns upon his brow what kind of king would leave his throne and make my sin and shame his very own yet he gave his life for me
folks getting some help nobody's looking I'm going to ask you that question again how long how long are you going to fight it how long Alone. They're going to sing another verse. They're going to sing another verse. Don't. Don't walk out of here tonight lost. Y'all sing another verse. Like one more one more verse. song 
talks about power to save and you can save anyone. But not only does it have a power to save, it has a power to keep you. Amen. Amen. It has a power to it has a power to bring you back when you get away from it. There's something about it. If you've ever been near it, if you've ever been around it, if you've ever if you've ever felt it and experienced it, it's hard to just walk away from it. Tell me what just happened. She just got saved. Amen. Amen. Brother Brian, amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Hey, can I be honest? I had a target on you all night. Amen. I was just waiting on you to get in. Shh. What happened over here? Oh, yeah, we're going to sing it. Yeah, we'll sing it. <laughs> Amen. That's right. Miss Debbie. Amen. Amen. Miss Debbie's leading them to the Lord. I mean, two at a time. Amen. What happened over here? Did she get saved? Shh. Tell her to come here. I need to see her. Listen, you say they're too little. Show me where. Hey, you show me where they're too small. Amen. Suffer the little children to come unto me. He didn't say the children. He said the little children. Amen. If we can get them in while they're little, amen, maybe we won't have to worry about them later. Amen. This little baby girl just got saved. Miss Tiffany just got saved. Don't have to worry about hell anymore. Amen. Brother Brian, what song do you want them to sing? I've got so much to thank him for. Is that what you said? Can y'all? We're just going to worship. Are y'all okay? I'm real good. Amen. If y'all need to leave, I understand. I'm fine. Amen. Y'all go ahead. When I look, I look around and see the, good thing. the things he's done.
much to thank Him for. Amen. How would you? How many of y'all would say Amen to that? Amen. Amen. You can be seated. You can be seated. Amen. I almost have to pinch myself, see if this is real. Amen. Reese thought that was funny. It's good to be saved. Amen. It's good to be in a church that's that's alive. It's good to be in a place that God meets with his people. Amen. Save souls. God's not done yet. The world can say all day that, eh, well, he's, you know, he's not done yet. He's not done till he says he's done. Amen. It's not over till God says it's over. Amen. All right. Let's get our J dollars out. Amen. <laughs> 